Welcome to CapShare. In this video, we'll walk through all of the features and functionality that CapShare has to offer. The default view in CapShare is this CapTable summary page, which you'll notice is sorted according to shareholders, along with security classes and the number of shares that everyone holds. You'll notice across the top here that I have different tabs to be able to look at this information differently. So if I move over to the security tab, for example, I can see all of the information aggregated on a security class basis. Next to most of these security classes, there are arrows where we can expand the information and get additional insight into the info that's here. So for example, if I expand the 2013 equity plan, I can see a breakdown of all of the options within that plan. Now most of the navigation in CapTable is done through this menu on the top left. So if I click on this, this will expand the menu. You can see here that we're in the cap table section. So if I collapse that, we have these various sections that I can access. So starting with the company section, the company dashboard page shows us high level information pertaining to our company, along with any documents that are company wide. So I can go ahead and edit the information for my company here, along with upload any documents that are relevant to the entire company. Moving on to the next section, so company manage users. This is where I can add users to the cap table to be able to edit the information or view the information or only view their specific information. So CapShare supports three levels of permission, edit access, view access, and restricted only access. So restricted only access is ideal for your shareholders to be able to see their own holdings, but not the rest of the capitalization structure across your company. The next section under company is the audit log. The audit log is useful because it shows us information about who has been editing our cap table. The next section under company is billing. So billing allows us to be able to see all of the different products and services that we've purchased along with a detailed billing history. The next section under company is integrations, which allows for API integrations with other software platforms. Okay, next we have cap table. So under cap table, we have summary, which is the view that you saw at the beginning of this video. Then we have cap table auditor. The cap table auditor was designed to help you understand any issues that you might be having with your cap table information. So here, for example, I have an expired option. So certificate OG2 has expired, but still has outstanding shares. This allows me as the equity admin for my company to make sure that everything is in compliance. You'll notice here that we have additional compliance checks. So um, ISO 100K limits, vested, unvested issues with termination and rule 701 violations. The next section is primary issuances. Primary issuances is where you'll add additional information to your cap table. Now this was designed just like a spreadsheet. So you can type in here directly. or you can copy and paste in from Excel. You'll notice that CapShare has highlighted in red all of the additional fields that are required to be filled out. If I don't fill these fields out, then this record won't save to the CapShare system. So make sure that if you wanna keep your information here, that you fill out everything that's highlighted in red. You'll notice that various types of issuances are represented along the bottom. So you'll see here that I have common issuances, preferred issuances, option grants, warrants, and convertible securities, which includes convertible notes, safe notes, and KISS notes. You'll also notice here a toggle for advanced columns. So let's go ahead and turn that on and take a look at that. So under my common stock, for example, you can see that I can add a vesting plan and make the common stock restricted. I can also add it to an equity plan, and there are other additional fields as well. All right, moving on to the next section of cap table, which is called secondary transactions. Secondary transactions works just like the primary issuances spreadsheets, but this is for all of those additional transactions that happen after original grant, right? So these are things like exercises, cancellations, repurchases. You can see across the bottom that I have all of the various types of transactions listed. Now, this is most useful when you're looking to do transactions in bulk, like if you wanna do 20 cancellations at once. I'll show you in a minute how to record cancellations and exercises on individual certificates. All right, looking at the next section of cap table, we've got export. This is an export of all of the information that you've uploaded into CapShare. This export is a formulaic Excel spreadsheet where you can see all of the information that you've entered into CapShare. The next section under cap table is settings. These settings control some of the behavior across your entire cap table. So you'll see here, for example, I can set the number of days in a year. If you're working off of a 360 day calendar, for example, versus 365. 
Next, we have share rounding in case your company doesn't support fractional shares. Um, you can round up or down or round to the nearest. Along with share rounding is the treatment of fractional vested shares and how you want that handled in the system. And the last section in here is cap table date. So here you could set the date of the cap table to a future or a past date and all vesting or interest calculations will be updated to be as of that date. This is useful for looking at various models and scenarios. Okay, the last section under cap table is called versions. So CapShare supports the concept of multiple versions of your cap table. This can be useful if you're looking at future rounds or a potential exit scenario. It can also be useful for preparing a version of your cap table where the information is a little bit more hidden, maybe for an investor, or maybe for creating aggregate shareholder views. So here you'll see a purple star next to the version of the cap table that is the primary or the default cap table. I can hover over this and click copy to create a copy of my cap table that I can use for other purposes. The next section of CapShare is called equity plans. This is where we track option plans, equity incentive pools, as well as vesting plans. So let's take a look first at plans investing. So here's where you'll see a list of all of your equity plans. You'll see in this demo example that I only have one called the 2013 equity plan. If you have multiple equity plans, you can record them all here. CapShare supports as many equity plans as you'd like. The next tab here is vesting plans. This is where we configure how our vesting plans are supposed to work so that the system can calculate the vesting automatically. So as an example here, you'll see that I have a four year cliff. We can go ahead and click edit on that. You'll notice that this four year cliff has two time-based vesting tranches. So the first is 25% vesting after one year. So after a year has elapsed, then 25% of the grant will vest. Afterwards, 75% will vest over three years in one month increments. So a total of four years with the first year being a cliff period. The benefit of setting up vesting plans this way is that we can apply the same vesting plan to a variety of different grants and have all of the grants vest on different vesting start dates. CapShare also supports milestone-based vesting. So this would be a milestone or a goal-based vesting. So as an example, we could say 100% of the shares vest upon sale of the company. You'll need to come back in here and check once that milestone has been completed and also enter in a completion date. The last section under equity plans is expiration policies. These policies affect what happened to vested options upon termination or another life event. So as an example, we'll go ahead and edit the standard expiration policy. You'll see here that I have various triggers. So if I terminate an employee for cause, you'll see that the vested shares are forfeited immediately upon termination. Whereas if it was for another reason, say I let the employee go, they would have 90 days to exercise those vested options before they're forfeited. Okay, so the other links under equity plans are links to your various option plans that you've created in CapShare. So let's go to this demo option plan, 2013 equity plan. So you'll notice that I have a list of all of the option grants and restricted stock that pertain to this plan. You'll notice across the top that I have equity grants, which is this list of all of the grants in the plan. Adjustments, which is any adjustments to the size of my option pool over time. And any documents that are pertaining to the equity plan specifically. The next section in CapShare is security classes, and we'll go ahead and go to the summary. The security classes summary has a list of all of the security classes that currently exist on my cap table. So you'll see that I have common, seed, and series A. If I hover over any one of these, I can edit them. So common, for example, I can list the authorized share count, the creation date, as well as the par value of the security class. For preferred security classes like series seed or series A, you'll notice a variety of liquidation preference terms and other settings. So for example, Series A has 4.31 as its original issuance price, and it's currently receiving a 1x liquidation multiplier on that. So Series A will get $4.31 per share before Common receives their payout. CapShare also supports additional liquidation preference terms like participation rights with a participation cap and cumulative dividends. The next section under security classes is seniority. This is where I control which security classes receive their payout first. So in this example, Series A is receiving its liquidation preference first, then Series Seed, and then Common receives any value after that. 
All right, so similar to equity plans, you'll see under security classes a list of all of the different security classes that I've created. So if we go to seed, for example, very similar to the equity plans page, you'll see that I have a list of all of my stock grants. Any adjustments that have been made to this security class, as well as any documents that pertain to the security class. Okay, next we go to the shareholders section. This page contains a list of all of my shareholders that I have on my cap table, whether they hold shares currently or not. Here I can merge shareholders together, add additional information to my shareholders, delete shareholders, and terminate several shareholders at once. Similar to primary issuances and secondary transactions, there's also a spreadsheet mode where you can interact with the information like a spreadsheet. And once I'm done editing information, I can switch back to table mode. So while we're on this page, let's go ahead and look at an individual shareholder and their holdings in this cap table. For our example, let's use Apex Capital. Now I could navigate to Apex Capital's page by clicking on this link here, or throughout CapShare, you'll find a search bar at the top. So I could also type in Apex Capital here. This is the individual shareholder page. You'll see a list of all of their holdings along with any documents that pertain to this shareholder. Let's go ahead and look at an individual certificate. So we'll look at PS4, for example. On the left here, we have high level information pertaining to the certificate. On the right, we can see a history of all of the past transactions that have contributed to this certificate. So we'll see here that on April 15th of 2015, this certificate was granted. On June 12th, 2018, this was transferred to Preferred Stock 14. So I can actually click on this. This is a link to Preferred Stock 14. And just like on PS4, you can see a history here. So you'll see that this was a transfer from PS4. So going back to this page, if I wanted to record another transfer or a cancellation or something, I could come up to the Actions menu here. And then we'll do a repurchase, for example. Put in the date, the number of shares that were repurchased, and the price that the company paid per share to repurchase these. Once I've saved that, you'll notice that it's listed in the history, and our total at the bottom reflects the change. Okay, the next section in CapShare is convertible securities. Here we have a list of all of the convertible securities on the cap table. You'll notice the principal amount, interest rate that's being accrued over time, any accrued interest, and the total balance to date. If one of these notes were converting into a preferred financing round, we'll take note seven, for example. I'd come to the page for note seven, go to actions, and then convert to equity. Choose a date, the target security class that this will be converting into. I can give it a security ID if I want or let CapShare generate one for me. Convert the balance, choose a price per share that this will convert in at, and then save the transaction. Again, you'll notice that the history is recorded here along with a link to the newly created certificate ID. Okay, next we'll take a look at scenarios in CapShare. The first type of scenario is called waterfall analysis. This scenario allows us to see who would get paid what in an exit distribution. We'll go to actions, edit, and we'll run a waterfall for 50 million. You'll notice that the default view here is shareholder, so I can see a pie chart with all of my different shareholders and the percentage that they're taking in this equity distribution. I could also look at the waterfall by security or certificate. So switching over to security, you can see that seed is taking about 44% of the equity distribution. So here you can see the pie chart breakdown of all of my different security classes, along with a table that shows the specific data. I can also export this to Excel. The next scenario is returns analysis. Returns analysis is essentially a backwards waterfall. So here I can see how much the company would need to sell for in order for a particular individual to make a certain return on their money. So for example, we'll take a look at Trident Partners and we'll say how much would the company need to sell for in order for Trident to receive $5 per share. So in this case, the company would need to sell for about $3.8 million in order for Trident to make $5 per share. All right, next we have financing rounds. So the financing rounds tool allows you to take a look at your future financing rounds and see what kind of dilutive effects it has on your cap table. So let's do a new financing round and we'll say that we're raising a series B. 
Okay, so here I can specify the name of my scenario. This is just for my own purposes so that I can remember what I'm doing here. If I scroll down here, I can go to new round inputs and put in a pre-money valuation. So we could say our company is worth $4 million before we take on new money. We're going to take on a new investment of 600000 And we're going to go ahead and load in our convertible securities because they'll be converting into this round as well. As I keep scrolling down, I can see the post-round overview. So after the round is closed, I'll have about 8.3 million fully diluted shares. You'll see that the pre-money fully diluted share count was 5.8 million. So I can see the new money shares, as well as the size of my option pool after investment. Now a lot of companies will do an option pool top off. So in this case, I have about a 15% option pool. I could say if I wanted to top off my option pool after the round to 20%, how many shares would I need to increase the plan by? You'll see here that it's about 500,000 shares that I need to increase the option pool by to top it back off to 20%. As I keep scrolling down, I can see information specific to my convertible security note holders. You'll see that the price per share on the round was 68 cents per share. Trident Partners is receiving a discount on that, and so they're only paying 55 cents per share. Now, you'll notice here that we track conversion cap as well as conversion discount. The financing round tool will take whichever of the two ends up with a more advantageous price for the investor. If I keep scrolling down, I can see a new round allocation, and I can allocate this money to investors. If I could select a current investor, I could create a new one. And then I could attribute the new money to that investor. So in this case, Apex Capital would be investing all $600,000. We'll say they're only investing $300,000. So $300,000 new investors, $300,000 from Apex Capital. And here's a breakdown of the price per share that they're paying, as well as the new shares that they'll receive. Now here at the very bottom, I can see my cap table inputs. So here's my pre-money shares according to security class, a percentage for all of those shares, as well as a post money distribution. So I can see the post money share counts as well as the percentage that they get diluted down to. So in this particular example, Common used to hold 14.77% of the cap table. They now own about 9.76% after this round closes. All right, the last section under scenarios is breakpoints. Now, breakpoints is the underlying uh, math or calculations behind the waterfall and the returns analysis. And we'll go ahead and sort this by security class. So you'll see from the breakpoints that from $0 to about $4 million, Series A is the only security class that's receiving value. And that makes sense because Series A is the most senior security class and it also has a liquidation preference. You'll notice that once Series A stops receiving its value, that our Series C starts to receive value from about $4 million to about $6 million. After that, common begins to receive value, and we can see how all of the rest of the money distributes down to everybody until the last breakpoint, which is our pro rata breakpoint. So at about 58 million, everybody is pro rata, meaning that all shareholders are receiving their ownership percentage in the distribution. Okay, the last section we're going to talk about today is workflow, which is CapShare's document automation tool. So under workflow, you can see workflow and templates. We're going to start with templates. This is where we put together the templates that will be used for document automation. So let's look at a system template. All of these system templates come with CapShare, so you'll have access to this entire library of legal templates. So let's take a look at the company templates, and we'll look at example option document. Okay, so here's a document that I've pasted in from Word and replaced with CapShare's mail merge fields. So if I wanted to do this again, so let's say for example here, this in big bold so you can see it, shareholder name. Okay, so let's say that I had shareholder name on my original document and this was supposed to be a mail merge field, right? So it's supposed to pull in the shareholder name from CapShare. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and then over on the left here I'm going to find shareholder or shareholder name, right? So right here, shareholder name. So I can go ahead and click and drag on this template mail merge tag and just drop it in. So you'll see now that my shareholder name has been replaced by this shareholder name mail merge tag. And you'll know that it's a mail merge tag because it's in blue and it has the brackets on it. And when you hover over it, it'll highlight in gray. So once I've replaced all of my mail merge tags and added signature tags at the bottom, I'll go ahead and save my template. This template can be used for document automation moving forward. All right, so we're gonna go to workflow 
and workflow. All right, so let's do a new workflow with our template that we just barely put together. So this is going to be test option grants. My type here is going to just need to match whatever my template was that I created. So I created a template that was an option grant template. So we're gonna go ahead and use option grant as the type of template. So I hit next. On this next page, I just select all of the option grants that I want to issue paperwork for at the same time. So in our case here, we'll just do option grant two and hit next. On this next page, we need to apply the templates that we're gonna be using. So I'll check the box here next to any of the option grants that I want to use the template. So you could issue multiple options at once that are all using different templates, or you could just hit the checkbox here and apply the template to all of the option grants at once. So documents, apply template, choose the one that we want to use here, put in our email address for the CEO, we'll go ahead and apply that template. So if we had any supporting documentation, say uh, an option plan doc, we could go ahead and add that as well. So we're going to check the box again, documents, upload document. This is where we would upload a document from our computer that will accompany all of the documents that are going to be signed, right? So this is going to be any documents that are not using mail merge tags that we would like the shareholders to receive as part of this package. The next step in workflow is approval. This is where we would add any persons who should approve this before it goes out for signature. So maybe this is a CEO or a paralegal or something like that. So you would add them, they would be able to look over all of the grants that you're about to send out documentation for. So this isn't a signature, this is just kind of a thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, this is good, this is not good, right? Um, these are completely optional. For our example here, we'll go ahead and add an approval. Lawyer man, add an email address and put the order. So first before the signatures or last after the signatures have been made. We're gonna do this first. So our lawyer is going to receive the documents first, be able to give his approval, thumbs up, thumbs down, and then it will send out to the CEO for signature and then to the shareholder for signature. So let's review and make sure that this all came together okay. So on the review step, I can see here, I've got option grant two for Hans. This is the document that I'm going to use and I can click on this and make sure that this is the right document and that the mail merge fields filled in correctly. I can also export this to PDF, which is a good idea so that I can take a look at the final document and just make sure that it all looks good. Then I can see my actions. So I've got my lawyer who's going to approve it, CEO who's going to sign it, and then the shareholder who's going to sign it. And once I've reviewed this and I'm sure that this is what I want to do, then in the top right corner here I can execute this workflow. So that's going to be it for our CapShare overview today. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always contact us through the support box here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Also, you can visit our help and support documentation at help.capshare.com or feel free to send us an email at support at capshare.com.